everybody, it's Hexa, and today's video is going to be a review, swatches, and tutorial for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. I know I am super, super late on this train. Right now, everybody is going crazy over the Subculture Palette. I personally think the colors in the Subculture Palette are very beautiful, but I've just been hearing so many, like, mixed reviews and mixed stories about the formula and about like the user friendliness of that palette that I, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's what I'm gonna invest my money in right now. I'm gonna wait around and see if they ever reformulate the subculture palette or change something so that people find it a little bit more appealing and easier to use. So I've already done my foundation, my blush, my contour, my brows and everything. I just left out my eyes and my lips so that I can do this tutorial for you guys. But first, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of like the lowdown, the basic info about this palette, and some swatches. If you wanna skip ahead to the swatches or the tutorial, I will leave a timestamp in the description box below. So this is the palette. It retails for 42 US dollars. I bought this in Romania at one of the Anastasia Beverly Hills salons and it's a little bit more expensive in Romania, um, which is ironic because the brand is owned by a Romanian woman, but anyways, um, <laughs> this is the box, it looks pretty much exactly the same as the actual palette inside. On the back it has some info about the palette, it has like the ingredients list and everything and it has this little photo so that you can see all of the colors inside. Okay, so this is the palette itself. I don't know if you can see, but it has like a very smooth, soft, velvety texture. You can definitely hear it. So as I'm like stroking my hands on it, you can hear that it's got like that nice velvetiness to it. On the back, it has this sticker, which again, tells you all of the ingredients and basic info about the palette. From these little labels, we can see that it is cruelty free and you're supposed to use it up within six months. Generally, with most cream products and liquid products, you want to respect this time stamp and use it up within that time, but for powders, I'd say use them up within two years and you should be fine. And now this is the inside of the palette. We've got a nice sized mirror over here. I'm just gonna bend this back so that I'm not blinding you guys. And these are the colors. There are 14 shades in total and it comes with a double-ended brush. I have used, and I dropped it. So the brush has this black blending brush kind of side and it has a more flat, dense packing brush on this side. Personally, I really like this side of the brush for the shimmer shades, but this blending side, I feel the bristles are a little too hard. I don't know why my camera is not focusing. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't really like this side of the brush, but it's nice that it's included in there. We have two shades in here that are straight up shimmers. So Vermeer and Primavera, these two over here are shimmer shades. And then this shade called Tempera um, is not quite a shimmer, but not quite a matte, it's kind of like a satin finish. And then Antique Bronze is a matte with glitter in it. I don't really know how to describe it. It's, it's also kind of like a satin finish. And so is Venetian Red. So now I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about my personal pros and cons to this palette. Um, I think the pros are, it's a very good price for it, I think you're getting a really good um, you're getting a really good value with this palette. Forty two dollars is like a pretty standard price for a high end palette. I think there's a great great selection of textures in here and also a really beautiful selection of colors. I can definitely use this palette for a very vampy, very red. Uh, kind of eye look, but I can also use like the browns and these more 
kind of neutral tones for something a little bit more wearable, a little bit more like work appropriate or day appropriate. If you like warm tones and warm tones suit your face, your skin tone, your style, uh, this palette can definitely get you through a lot, whether you're wearing it out to parties or if you're just wearing it in your day-to-day -day regular life. I also really like the mirror. I think it could have been a little bit bigger, but it's a decent size and you can definitely use it to do your makeup using this mirror. And I also like that it comes with a brush, although like I said, I don't really like this blending side of the brush. I think the bristles are just too hard and they really feel very, very plasticky. It is a synthetic brush, but even with synthetic brushes, they definitely come a lot softer than this side of the brush, but the other side is pretty nice and I think it works really, really well, especially with these two shimmer shades over here. Now for the cons. Although I really love this fuzzy texture, I think it's like very... I don't know, It. I, I said in one of my other videos with this palette that it literally just feels like a pet. It's very satisfying to just stroke your hand all over this thing, but... I feel like this would get so dirty so easily. I haven't really used the palette a lot yet, but I just feel like these kinds of velvety textures tend to really, really cling on to powders and eyeshadows and stuff, so I'm not sure how intelligent that was of a decision for the packaging of this, but I do still appreciate it. Like, it's not bad, it's just probably gonna get quite dusty and dirty. Another con for me is that although these eyeshadows are incredibly beautiful and pigmented, they are so pigmented that they're kind of powdery. I know that's another issue that people were having with the Subculture palette is that it was super, super powdery, and I find that this palette also is. Uh, you get a lot of kickback when you dip into the pans and you can get a lot of fallout with some of the shades. You have to be really careful and just use the tiniest amount otherwise you're going to end up with just way too much product all over your face. I think that was it for my pros and cons so next we will be moving on to the swatches. So I've just rubbed a load of concealer all over my arm just so that we can have a little bit of a wet base to swatch these on. I will be going in an up and down kind of order, so one, two, three, four, five, six, that way, um, just because they're arranged really nicely from light to dark, and I want to keep the swatches that way as well. All right, let's go. This shade is Tempera. Next we have Raw Sienna, Golden Ochre, Burnt Orange. Vermeer. Primavera. Bon fresco, red ochre, antique bronze, Venetian red, love letter. Warm taupe, cypress umber, that is so pigmented, I really didn't expect it to be so dark. I've used this shade before, but that swatch turned out so pigmented. And the last shade I think is pronounced Realgar or Realgar, Realgar, I'm not sure. So there we have it, all 14 shades of the Modern Renaissance palette. Now that I've got my beautiful armful of swatches and also my pants 
covered in swatches because reasons. Um, let's get into the tutorial. I think for this tutorial I'm gonna go for something a little bit more wearable but still with a pop of color. I think the reds are definitely like the stars of the show in this palette so I definitely want to use some of those beautiful reddish pinkish shades um, but I also want to keep it kind of day wear appropriate, like something that you could potentially maybe wear to the office. <laughs> so, uh, you know, don't like quote me on that. I don't know what's gonna happen by the end of this, but we're gonna try. <laughs> First, I'm taking the shade Burnt Orange and applying that to my crease. I'm just gonna apply that to like the outer half or the outer third and blend it into about the middle part of the crease. Then I'm taking the shade Golden Ochre and I'm gonna apply that to the inner part of the crease. Next, I'm taking a bit of the shade Realgar. I'm really hoping that I'm saying that right. I have no idea what this means or how to pronounce it, um, but I'm gonna apply that to the outer V. This shade is really, really pigmented and it's super easy to apply a little too much of it. So I'm gonna try to like just use a really small amount of product and build up the color slowly. So I've kind of made like this winged out effect with the eyeshadow. I'm just gonna blend this side out a little bit more. It's really, really hard to get this kind of look to be even, especially because most people's faces and eyes are not perfectly symmetrical. So when I do this kind of look, I always end up winging out one side more than the other. I don't know, what do you guys think? If you're looking at me head on, am I even? How how was the symmetry here? This needs to be blended more. <laughs> so I said I really wanted to use one of the beautiful bright red shades, so I think I'm gonna use Love Letter, and I'm going to be applying that to the lower lash line. My eyes have been really, really watery these last few months, so there might be a little bit of like streaking over here because that corner of my eye is just extremely wet and not really the best canvas for powders to stick onto. This is probably one of my favorite effects to use with makeup. I like to do like this, almost like an under wing. So like a winged eyeliner that starts off from the lower lash line using my eyeshadow. I have a little bit of fallout on my cheek. So I've stopped with this shade about midway through my lash line. And now on a clean brush, I'm going to take some of Bon Fresco and I'm going to apply that to the rest of the lower lash line. I actually take the thicker side of that and just smoke it out a little bit. For the lid color, I'm taking the brush that came with the palette and I'm using the shade... Which one should I use actually? <laughs> I'm gonna go in with Vermeer and just apply that to my lid. Look how pretty this color is. 
This is also really great for a brow bone highlight and inner corner highlight. But today I'm just gonna use it on my lid. And I'm taking the brush that had Realgar on it and I'm just gonna blend back into that shimmer shade. And for the last step using this palette, I'm gonna be taking a angled eyeliner brush and using the shade Cypress Umber. And I'm just gonna create like a winged eyeliner using that dark brown shadow. We're gonna try to make it link up with the under wing with this um, red wing that we made using Love Letter. And I'm not gonna take this wing all the way in. I'm just gonna kind of take it about a third of the way into the lid. I'm getting some fallout on my cheek from this again. So definitely need to be careful with this palette. Either use a tissue under your eye to catch the fallout or you can do your eyes first and then do your base or you can bake under your eyes and then brush the bake away along with the fallout. I keep looking at the viewfinder. I'm sorry about that. I'm still getting used to this camera so Okay, so we finished up with the eyeshadow. Now I'm just gonna get some mascara and finish off the eyes. Now I do feel like this eye look is missing a little bit of glow so I'm gonna go in with my Anastasia uh, Nicole Guerrero palette with the shade Forever Young and I'm gonna apply that to my, um, my brow bone and my inner corner. Okay, never mind. this brush does not want to work. Well, let's get another one. <laughs> I'm trying to see if this glow is even like showing up on camera because in person it looks really pretty. For lips, I'm going to be going in with the Anastasia Lip Palette Volume 1. I love this lip palette. It is so beautiful. And I'm going to take number 3. I'm going to use number 3 today because I feel like it's a almost like a perfect shade match for Realgar. It's a little bit darker, I feel, but it's a really close shade match and I think it would look really cool like just a little bit of um like what's the word a little bit of cohesion cohesiveness I don't know and to apply that I will be using the brush that came with the lip palette please excuse my dry ass chapped lips I'm sorry <laughs> I wear lip balm like every single day but it's not helping. I don't think my camera wants to focus on my lips.
Okay, I think this is about as nice as we're gonna get it today with like shaky hands from low blood sugar and no lip liner, so let's leave it at that. I'm gonna set this look in place with some Smashbox primer water. And this look is done. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you would like to see any more videos with any of the Anastasia products in this video, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter or on Instagram or anywhere. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat for more. And you can donate to my Patreon down below to support me and my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.